Welcome to the Political Action Club presents the Roundtable. Today's guest, Dante Bucci on the right, Brian Panzius on the left, Brett Barbin on the outskirts. Our topic today, the Affordable Care Act and the implementation of the website. Mr. Bucci, yes. do you have any thoughts on this particular issue? I wonder. <laughs> yes, I do. I have plenty of thoughts on this issue. Uh, the first one is, uh, whether you're a Republican or you're a Democrat, whether you're a fan of Obamacare or not, the way the government rolled out this website was simply atrocious. Uh, they had four years to plan out the, the implementation or the rollout of this website. And I was appalled by the way uh, it completely crashed. Five million people lost their insurance because of Obamacare. And only 60,000, I believe, signed up on the first month. Now, some might say that it's because of the website, but still, even if the website was up and running, I'm sure they would not reach their quota by the time that Thank they wanted. Thank you, Doug. Um, Brian, since you usually represent the right, I mean the left, is there any way that you can shine this first thing I think so. This was a fault. Um, uh, the website, and I think the blame falls uh, directly on Kathleen Sebelius, the uh, Secretary of the uh, Health and Services, human. Health and Human Services Department, um, and it's, there's no real excuse for this. Um, only 50,000 50, people signed up so far using the website, which is much lower than it, it should be, much lower than it's expected. And another big number that I would like to see them get up is the number of um, people under the age of 35 enrolled because that's a big um, demographic that they need to bring up in order to um, help Obamacare actually work. And they, uh, it's only been 19 percent of people who signed up have been under 35, and uh, they, it needs to be up to about 38 percent for it to actually work the way they were expecting. Great. I'd like to look at this <coughs> from the cynical island perspective of Mr. Barbin. Is the utter failure of the website and the fact that uh, so many people lost their insurance after being told they wouldn't lose their insurance actually a good thing for Republicans? It should be a good thing, except their poll numbers and the representation of the favor of Congress still seems to remain low. So clearly they aren't voicing their opinion as much as maybe Fox News is trying to do. But uh, the point is, yes, the Obama administration, they really messed up on this one. The entire, I'm glad that Catherine Sebelius took the blame for this. Uh, she went right up to the, uh, <clears throat> the Senate, she took the blame as they went into the, uh, the committees. And Obama has voiced that, yes, this was all his, not, okay, not all his fault, <laughs> this was the fault of his administration. And again, that's on us, which is why we're, tw that's on me. And that's why I'm trying to fix it. And as I said earlier, I guess last week, and I will repeat, uh, that's something I deeply regret because it's scary getting a cancellation notice. So can I follow it up with, should Republicans be celebrating then? Because what's happening is what they hoped for from the, uh, the get-go. Oh yeah, they, I definitely think they should be celebrating. They should be proclaiming that it's a in, in total incompetent failure. 36, 30, except for Very good. Then Dante, why are you so upset if the end result is exactly what your side wanted, which is the failure of the Affordable Care Act. First off, the Republican Party never wanted five million Americans to lose their insurance policy. I just think that's stupid in general. But it's a nice outcome. It's not It's not a nice outcome. Five million people lost their insurance. But if, Listen, if, it, had run, if it had run smoothly, then he'd be celebrated and everything you said would have not come true. Let me finish. Uh, Republicans are getting nailed by Democrats because they are, quote-unquote, rejoicing over the fact that Obamacare is a colossal failure at this point. I mean, Brett, you said a moment ago that the poll numbers in Congress are low. That's both parties. Everyone's fed up with the gridlock in Washington and the way things are going. I mean, it's just, it's completely, completely annoying. Okay, final po point uh, for Brian here. Um, is there any way that the Obama administration can at least salvage a tie out of this? Or is, is the Obamacare issue going to dog them for the next three years? Is it going to fail? Well, I think they have to fix the website now. That's the first step. 
and get it up and running and get numbers like people under 35, um, get those numbers up and get it running the way that they wanted to, to hopefully turn it around. But this is a scar. This will last a while. Um, they are doing certain things to hopefully soften the blame. They moved the um, enrollment period back a month to be after the 2014 elections, um, which could help. Uh, that seems to indicate that they're not expecting great outcomes out of that open, out of that um, date, and that it's um, it's really a bad situation, and that the best they can hope for is maybe a tie. Right. Okay. Final thoughts, Mr. Bucci. Your final words. Uh, my final words are regarding a controversial vote uh, yesterday in the United States Senate, where they invoked what they call the nuclear option. Ew. Seriously? So gross. Um, that means they changed the rules for a filibuster um, to 51 votes, okay? It completely ruins the sanctity of the United States Senate. Um, of course, the Republicans did try this in 2005. Um, if, I was conscious, if I was conscious about politics back then, I would be against it because there's a reason the Senate is different from the House. This maneuver uh, makes it identical to the House, and that's frankly not good for Washington. It's a sad day for America. Mr. Panzius, your final words. My final thoughts uh, are about our own state governor, Chris Christie, and his image, and the way he is portrayed uh, in the media leading up to what looks like a prominent uh, run in the 2016 presidential elections, a possible run, and specifically a Time magazine cover um, with a picture of him and the title, The Elephant in the Room. Obviously a pun about his weight, I think we just need to uh, reflect on how, uh, oh, how an overweight um, person such as Christie is portrayed in America and in politics, and if that is actually going to be a significant factor in his presidential run, and should it be? Uh, should it be even talked about at all? Thank you. Mr. Barbin, your final words. They go right out to the Koch brothers. Koch Brothers started a campaign in order to uh, make sure that young people didn't sign up for the Obamacare. Open the box, Joe! He's on coming! Act, and um, depending on how successfully it, it worked out, you can't really tell. I think they may have the numbers, but... Uh, if, if they don't get the young people signed onto the program, the program will fail, and there won't be enough money in order to circle it around, and the whole thing will go down. So, um, my homage right out to the Koch brothers, and that the fact that they're doing this is quite devious, and it truly shows the, uh, the lengths that the Republicans will go in order to have this thing fail. And until next time, we are The Roundtable. <laughs>